So like I was, I was in the military, right? And I did intelligence. So I remember sitting in intelligence training. We learn about how dictators control a country, right? So uh, like back then it was like Hugo Chavez, Kim Jong-il and uh, uh, North Korea. Um, you have to essentially censor and cut off information, right? And then you have to control the narrative where the people that you're subjugating for lack the of a better word. The science is settled. Yeah. The people that you're subjugating uh, believes that you're there to protect them or you're acting for their own good, right? So for most of these dictators, the evil Westerners and specifically the Americans are the target, right? So we're uh, easy to polarize. We're easy to demonize. Yeah, right. Like it's the Americans, you know, like, like social media. Yeah. Right. And something's going wrong internally declare war, make, make it an outrage on some like a foreign enemy. And like, you have to sacrifice for the greater good. Right. And which is why, like, I love like, uh, Ayn Rand's book. Cause you know, it almost, it, it, it does such a good job of like, uh, painting this picture, right? Everything is for the greater good. Everything's, and it's like, you have to actually be able to take care of yourself. You know, the, the, the best way to help the poor is to not be one of them. Like if you're struggling, you're not doing anything for the greater good. You're literally just struggling. The, so that's one way, right? If you look at how we uh, treat POWs and how you break them, there's all these like techniques, right? One is to, to uh, uh, give them a little bit of priv uh, privilege, right? So you release, you, you relax some of the restrictions, then you bring the restrictions back, you relax, you bring it back. And, and like you could start getting further and further. And if you think of like the lockdown and like all the stuff we're doing, like, I'm not saying that's what it is, but when you view it through that lens, um, there's some like, consistency. Yeah, like 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 I'm like, what in the hell, right? Or uh, 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 when we wanted to destabilize another country, right? You literally start creating one one. It's um, it's called a psyop, right? Psychological operation, and you start basically pitting groups against each other, right? Because once Divide you start pitting, once you start pitting groups against each other you're creating uh, 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 instability in that country. And then you can start going in and then you can see a lot of uh, the, the people that we put in power, right? So like, like it's not a secret. We trained uh, the Taliban in the 70s to help destabilize uh, what's going on in Afghanistan so the Russians couldn't take over that country, right? And then a lot of that senior, a lot of the leadership there eventually became senior leadership and then we ended up calling them terrorists and we're fighting them, right? Again, so like all this stuff, right? I was I learned it, right? Um, got to participate in a little bit of it when I was in Afghanistan, and then I think it was last year. It was the first time. It was probably like April or May. I'm like, holy shit! Like, if this is actually what we're doing here, a lot of what's going on would make a lot more sense, right? Because like now I'm like, what what is going on? Why are we doing all these things? Like it makes no sense. But once you start seeing it through that lens, it can make sense, right? And then uh, another one is, so anything that's not, again, like with the, the uh, main narrative is, it's a conspiracy theory, right? And there's like a shame about it. So if you say anything that's not part of the main narrative, you're a science denier, you're a conspiracy you're an, you're theorist. You're anti-vax. Yeah, you're anti-vax, right? And if you're you didn't part get of all the, your vaccines <clears throat> and all your boosters, you're anti-vax. Yeah, you're, because you're you're you missed one, you're anti-vax. We have, we have amnesia. We literally have amnesia, right? Like, and, you know, if you follow my social media, probably don't. Actually, I know you don't. But, like, they'll, we'll say the politicians, the people in charge will say stuff, completely contradict it, like, three months later. Right? And, and it's, like, and it's just, like, people literally just forgot about it. It's like, how do you publicly say you're not going to do this or you're going to do this? Three months later, completely do something that's... That you said you that. wouldn't do and you couldn't do. Yeah. But and yet like, they did anyway. And then like, it's, you know, where that's like the, that's a hallmark of an abusive relationship, right? Like literally the person could change what they're saying. And rather than being like, whoa, 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 whoa something's going on here. Like I'm being manipulated, right? It's like the, the, the person that's being manipulated lose their will and they start actually thinking they're the ones that's crazy or they need like, it, you, you literally could break people's uh, will that way. And gaslighting then, them. Yeah. It's, then ga once, it's called gaslighting. And then once yeah. you get to that point, yeah. how hard is it to make whatever changes that you want uh, to implement? So usually, right, so like, you know, like anything, there's like, you have to, um, I think there's two. One, one, you hit rock bottom, 
right? Where, and everyone's rock bottom is different. And then two, which is the one that I'm probably the most like inspired by, there's always like a tipping point of consciousness. So like Donnie talks about this a lot, Donnie. Um, Epstein. Yeah, he talks about like, like spiral dynamics, right? And, and the, the whole idea is that you don't need everyone to see something, but <clears throat> there's a percentage. It could be one, it could be 3%, it could be 9%. No a one knows for sure. tireless, irate minority. Yeah, right. But when you get enough momentum, you establish something in the field that's different, all of a sudden you hit a tipping point and then it's like a, a typhoon. It goes or, viral. Or, yeah, where people wake up, right? So uh, the, the example I like is uh, uh, cell phones, right? Cell phones were around like the 80s. But for most people I know, it was 2000, 2001, they got a Nokia, right? They got that Nokia. It hit a tipping point. Something happened where that just became available to people, right? And I think like... There's a book, yeah. uh, Malcolm Gladwell, yeah, Malcolm called Gladwell, The Tipping, tipping point, 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 where yeah. he talks exactly about yeah. that, what causes things to go viral. Yeah, so for this, right? Because if you try to fight this stuff, I mean, it's fun to kind of troll it. Sometimes I do it. It's not going to do anything, Right. But if you see it for what it is, which is literally just like hysteria, right? It's, it's, like, it's like women being addicted to uh, calories, right? And you can logically present, them, hey, listen, you know, you don't work out the same every day. So how does it make sense that you're restricted to 1,200 calories a day? And if you go 1,300, the world's over, you're going to get fat. And then if you do 1,100 the, other day, the, the next day, uh, then you're winning, right? How about how you? How about like being in tune with your body, being aware of how you feel, right? Or uh, the whole thing with your weight on the scale, right? It's like you're. And this happens a lot at the gym. They gain ten pounds, right? But in their mind, it's been programmed. 120 pounds is my ideal weight. So they gain ten pounds. They look way better. I think they look way better. They even think they look way better. But there's some kind of like stuckness where it's they like can't a program, get over the right? emotional attachment to being 10 pounds over their weight, right? So be log log logically explaining it to them is not going to help, right? I don't, I'm sure you guys all tried. It doesn't help, right? Well, people like, don't make yeah. decisions based on logic anyway. They yeah. make decisions based on emotion. Yeah, but when you see it for what it is, right, and then you get the people that are ready to actually shift and there's not people that do, there's going to be a tipping point and then this is actually a catalyst for that to shift. Like, I was, I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like, when the election happened, I'm like, oh, God, I have to deal with, like, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, right? But actually, it's been, what, like a, a year now? I think it's great because Trump came They're in. Red pilling everybody. <laughs> yeah, Trump came in, and he literally created massive instability, right? Yes. I remember at first people were outraged, like, with the stuff he was saying, and, like, within, like, like three or four months of him just being more of a public figure, he could say like stuff that usually like would get him canceled and people were just like, oh, that's just wrong. He's an asshole. But they just let him do it. And he literally pushed the boundary. Think of like how people thought about the media before Trump and think of the credibility of media now, right? So he was necessary to create that instability, right? He completely destroyed the media, the credibility <laughs> yeah. of the media industry yeah. within, within then, his presidency. And then now you they have did a good job of self-emulating. And they continue to do every day. Well, they did it to themselves, but yeah. the point is that he illuminated that, made that so obvious. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Like it was already, it was always there. I'm like, like for me, I'm like, how did I never see this before? Like, how did I not see this before? Yeah, how, like, how he, ridiculous some of it actually is. Yeah, right. Was. And then and then you have uh Biden and Kamala come in and they're literally trying to like run the old playbook, right? But once you kind of like get exposed and you're trying to run the old playbook, it's just like, dude, like you're you said you were never going to mandate vaccines in January. Like it's on video. Like you, you as the president of the United States, give your word. Gave your word, right? And 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 we don't have the authority to later. do that. We would never do that, right? So yeah. like, for me personally, uh, I think, I think uh, uh, Biden and Kamala were necessary, right? There's more people that uh, talk to me now. Like like oh my god, like like something's not right here, and and they hardcore identify as a Democrat, right? But like, they don't quite know yet, but it's, it's just like, it's, it's almost like the reality is unraveling. And it just, it takes, it takes a little bit. Cause if you're used to this one reality and all of a sudden everything you thought was 
how the world was supposed to work. People don't change root. their belief yeah. system until it's proven invalid. And yeah. so that's what's happening. Yeah. It's like and in 2016, the right got red pilled. Yeah. I just, I just, just saw this today. Uh, this is the first time in the, uh, as, at least as far as I think like they started keeping track, there's more registered uh, Republicans in Florida than Democrats today. It's the first time ever. You know? And it's not even like, it's not like I'm like. But you're saying there's more registered Republicans? Republicans and Democrats. Well, in Florida. Florida's always been red. So you're saying the more Democrats. Registered. You're talking about registered, registered. voters. There's always right. been, the Democrats always had an advantage. They had more people registered. Yeah. They didn't they, they they might not necessarily want, but there was more uh, registered. Okay, so even though right. there's more Republicans yeah. registered. And I don't, I don't it think it's It depends on who shows up on election day to vote. So they just they didn't show up. Hillary lost because nobody yeah. was excited about her. Yeah. And I don't think it's necessarily because people think the Republican Party is so great. It's just, it's just like, well, what's going on right now? It's like, what, you know, it's almost being like people being forced to just choose something that's not that. And it's, it's fucking with the reality. Well, doesn't it seem like that's always the game? Like you're trying to choose the lesser of the two evils? Because it's never like, like we have two ideal candidates, people who have run businesses, they, they've, yeah. they've been successful, they know how to manage things, they know how to do an industry that's been successful with people they've been successful. Yeah. That's not what we get to choose from. We get to choose from... Not people that, that have their act together. We yeah. get to choose from. So this is why and it's like the lesser of the two evils is, is what we we seem to yeah. So and this is why have available um, every. This is every why election. like probably like one of the most exciting things about like crypto to me. People think it's like Dogecoin or like a way to make money, right? The biggest thing growing in crypto is called DeFi, decentralized finance. So decentralized fi uh, finance is think it's like a entity or that's represent that's taking uh, some of the functions of the bank. But it's de decentralized. No one owns it. So there's governance. And governance is the people that are participating in it. So one way to do it is called liquid democracy. So, for example, uh, if it comes to stuff that's dealing with a spine, right, I can delegate my vote to you for that topic. But if you don't do a good job, I could take that vote back and vote myself. And uh, so now instead of having like people that are locked into terms, so like right now uh, in America, we have representative democracy, right? These people are supposed to represent our interests. Supposed to. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Uniparty going to uniparty. So it's this thing that, you know, people in charge are trying to kill off, but it's decentralized. It's like software, like in the internet. Like, like if you if you push too far, literally you'll piss people. It's, it's the funniest thing, right? Because if you make it too obvious, then you'll actually piss people off and you'll wake them up faster. But if you don't, it's going to grow and grow and grow, and then it'll actually undermine your position, right? So like as that happens... Right. I think a lot of the principles in uh, DeFi, so crypto, it will actually start bleeding over into how we do politics. Because and it'll make sense. It will make it makes way more sense. It's more it efficient. Makes more sense, right? And like, it's a more representation yeah, of, like of you the have people. Like Congress, like without term limits, like you have, and then like the, the stuff that's going on, like like we're voting on policy. We're voting on how we do things, right? You don't need someone that is sitting in a room with a bunch of other people going over a 4,000 page document that none of them read and then just making this, uh, these decisions and then cutting like back, like backroom deals, uh, this lobbying money, this lobbying money. If you let, if you do, if you let me put this in, which benefits my lobbyists, I'll vote for your thing. Like how is that benefiting the people? It is not. Right? But when it, when it comes to liquid democracy, you have to actually participate to be able to vote. Right. So like you have to be participating in the ecosystem somehow, which makes sense. If you're not participating, why do you get to vote? Right? And if you're participating, you either have the vote yourself or you could delegate your vote to other people. Now, the person that gets the vote delegated to them, if they're not acting in the interest of the ecosystem, they're going to get their vote taken away. Right? But if they actually are acting in the interest of everyone, they're benefiting. And then the ecosystem, the people that are participating, benefiting is a win-win-win. Right now, it's not like that at all. You know, and... Um, that's and that, that that's actually why I'm really excited about like crypto and I talked about it and the stuff I'm like getting into. But just like everything else, right? The standard is low. People want to talk about Dogecoin and stuff. But at least they're tuning in. They're tuning yeah. into that, which yeah, is but, which but which is cool. a small step. There's literally but it's a step a in the right of, direction. There's literally a way of governing that's growing. It's growing rapidly. It's exploding. And like it's like I don't see how it doesn't start bleeding into um, other ways of governing. Right, because it's starting to turn into like, because you essentially have like a, an entity that's 
supporting and growing itself, right? Or another example is like if you have a Tesla car that self-drive and it's doing Uber, right? So it can actually drive around, collect money, and it's actually fueling its own um, <clears throat> its own account, and then it can use its account to do other stuff, and then actually deliver that uh, deliver that product or service better, right? And then you know, it requires a little bit of AI, but like if you have something like that and you have people participating, being able to vote to help that be uh, more beneficial for people where everyone really gets to uh, have a vote, then like most of these people that are in power, like the whole game of like uh, a politics has to shift. So it, outli- it has outlived its usefulness. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what Donnie talks about all the time, right? The first tier is there's a limited amount of resources. We're all trying to bind and control. And then the next tier is that the more you're actually benefiting the system, the more you get rewarded, right? And there's actually an unlimited amount of resources, and you're coming from a place of abundance. Lord so, Acton said, liberty exists in the distribution of yeah. power, tyranny, and the concentration of it. Yeah. That's what I like about crypto as well, because it's yeah. money. Yeah. Money has one purpose. It's yeah. a, well, two, it's a medium of financial yeah. exchange and a yeah. store of financial value. That's yeah. it. It's the only yeah. reason that it exists. Yeah. So it's an easy way to facilitate beneficial human interaction. People come yeah. to your gym. People come to me for my books or the self-help or whatever. People yeah. come to you for advertising. People come to you for health. We all get paid based on the value that we bring to the marketplace, our reserve of knowledge and the, our gifts, our skills, and our talents that we've taken the time to develop. Yeah, and then if you like look at financial literacy, so basically how the economy works, it almost seems purposeful that the average person has no idea how the economy works. Like how what's money? Where does it come from? What yeah. does it mean that we're in debt? Right? Like all that stuff. So then that's these, why we did a documentary, Economic Prosperity for All. Yeah, and then these, explain it. these politicians, they'll just literally throw out like a word like, oh, we're going to do quantitative easing, and it's for the American people. And then, and then you You're know. like, what the hell is quantitative yeah, like, oh, that sounds easing? Good. Yeah. What quantitative easing is, is that the <laughs> Fed basically yeah. buys the government <clears throat> bonds. Yeah. So when the Fed yeah. holds the bonds, the interest expense to the Treasury is zero because we don't pay money on our own debt but once as soon as they sell it to china or whoever whoever holds that bond then the federal government has to pay interest so when the fed buys those mm-hmm. the interest expense goes to zero on those bonds as long as the fed holds them so it's a way to keep the um congress from the debts you know from exceeding the debt ceiling it gives them more money to spend basically yeah and as you increase the money supply and circulation in the economy the economy grows as you contract it the economy contracts. Yeah. And like if, if a, just a probably like 3% of the population understood that, it would, it would be a game changer. It doesn't have to be the majority of the population. You just need to reach a critical threshold. We're getting closer. We're getting, we're getting closer. Like all this, all this stuff going on is, is like, I'm so glad like I'm around for this. It's, it's up until last year. I always felt like something was wrong and like I was going nuts, like people couldn't see it. And then <laughs> my last year happened and I'm like, yes, like this is what I've been talking about the whole time. Now more and more people have seen it. I couldn't even verbalize what was wrong. I just, it's just something which is not right. One of the things yeah. that Panash Desai talked about, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He was kind of like an Indian spiritual mm-hmm. guy. He says everything that no longer serves humanity yeah. is dissolving. And that's what, that's what yeah. we're seeing. The media different political movements, parties, people in those parties. It's kind of like the, yeah. the Wizard of Oz, like the curtains yes. kind of gotten pulled back and enough people <clears throat> have see how the system works. And then once you understand how the system works, it's pretty easy to see yeah. who's manipulating and, and fucking shit up. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. And like in the internet, right, which um, is, is this thing that that just made it all possible, right? Like, information was not available like this even 20 years ago. And now, if you try to censor something, like, they took away the dislike button uh, from YouTube maybe, like, a month ago, right? Because, like, every, <laughs> basically everything uh, Biden put out, it was, like, 160 likes, like, 10,000 dislikes. That's nice. insane. <laughs> that was That's insane. Seriously. Yeah. That's just awesome. Awesome. They just took away the dislike button. But, like... Even like taking it away, it, it, it just it just makes it more obvious. 
it just makes it more obvious. Yeah. Or that uh, Fauci <laughs> documentary, I think it got like a like a two or three percent on uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, wow, I've horrendous. never seen something like so low. Yeah. Score yeah, yeah, yeah. The critic score was like ninety four percent, and then like the audience score was like three percent. It was, it was, it's. Like, so how yeah. humiliating for those people in power. Because they realize that people aren't yeah. buying this mm-hmm. this load that they're yeah. setting. Must be all. They're like they're not buying it, but we'll keep it going for as long. We're in yeah. it now. We got to ride this sucker till the wheels yeah, you, fall yeah, off. Like it's a little like. But they're, you're but they're actually committed. burying themselves yeah. by continuing yeah. on the on this facade that's becoming more and yeah. more obvious. Yeah. No, it's great. Like uh, what's that that that, uh, that guy uh, Jesse Smollett, right? He. Juicy Smollier, yeah, the, the guy, the guy, right? Chappelle said he got beat like, up. Juicy right. Smollier. I don't know if you guys saw. Uh, so there was a, I saw the interview he did in 2019 with ABC, mm-hmm. right? He's like, I just want, like, I don't think no, I don't think everything happens for a reason. You know, all I mm-hmm. want is like justice, and like I just want to, everyone want to be treated fair. Like, and he's an actor. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, oh man, like it's really moving. Like, like watching it now, I'm like, holy shit, and it's ridiculous, right? But like, if you think about it, like, what, what is the upside of Paying some guys to beat you up. He never thought he was going to get caught. Yeah, but like, like just like Hillary Clinton never thought that you know the shenanigans that she yeah. pulled would get exposed. It's unbelievable. Like, like, w- like, what is going through your head? Like, he's and he's like a semi well known successful actor. He didn't need it, right? But like, to, to like, he wanted like, a virtue signal and get attention. Yeah, like, and like his his motivation supposedly is that like it, he he thought it would like give him more prestige. But that's the upside to to all the all the downside. Like, it's it's crazy what's going on, and and like it, it the and I, I like the, the a lot or of the these, Ky- like, even the Kyle officials. Rittenhouse one. We we did yeah. a podcast and talked about that. Yeah, and we went through all the people on the left that yeah. had heard. Yeah. What the media told him that Kyle Rittenhouse basically was an active shooter, yeah. and he, you know, murdered three black guys. Yeah. And yeah. then when they find out that it was actually three white guys, and they, you know, they, they listened to the testi- testimony yeah. from the trial, and they were stunned because, yeah. you know, the media told them something completely different. And then yeah. those three guys that he had yeah. defended himself supported against, by the president, by the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone, everyone thought like he shot like three, three black guys. Yeah, he killed them all. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And and like, and the way they like portray him, like, listen, some teenager who made a stupid move. Like, why would you bring your gun to a? Well, the reason he yeah. did it is because the peep because the, the police were yeah. hands off. They were yeah. not allowed to do anything, yeah. and so the owners of these different businesses got yeah. together and said, "Hey, we'll pay you guys to protect our property." And so that's yeah. why Kyle, because he his family lived there, yeah, and so yeah. that's why he he was. I mean, he's seventeen years yeah. old. He's figuring, "Hey, I can help out. Police yeah. aren't doing anything. I don't want to see my." neighborhood get yeah. get burned down these people's businesses destroyed he's at an age where he still has this hallucination yeah. of what's right and wrong yeah, exactly. and you stand up for what you believe yeah. in that's most yeah. people are, that, that fades past that yeah. age but he he still had a little bit left good for him yeah i mean yeah but like the way like they portrayed him it's wild and then the the facts are coming out and it's like this 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 was just not true you know like 